Hi, I'm Tom. I'm Vanessa. And I'm Mackenzie. And welcome to the, the Couch, Couch Potato, Potato Lab. Lab. This is the show where we bring the science to you. Now, we are on our 37th episode, I believe, right? 37? 37, that sounds 38, like eggs. Tom. 38. 38. Oh, wow. So, uh, 38 is almost 40. And let me just say, what a journey it has been. Start to where we are right now. We've come a long way. Uh, and we just like to say thank you to everyone that is tuning in right now or will tune in in the future. Now, before we, get begi uh, before we begin, sorry, uh, there is a lab manual that you do have to download that is right there at bit.ly backslash couch potato lab. That name again is bit.ly couch potato lab. Uh, that's going to be our activity guide for today. It is super exciting. We can't wait to share it with you. And again, throughout the program, if you have any sort of questions, comments, or concerns, you could always uh, get at us at our social media or our phone number, which is 306-570-1013. That real life phone number is 306-570-1013. And again, uh, if you have questions for social media, you could reach us at our handle, at Eyes Youth. And you could find that on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and now TikTok. What a world. Uh, and if you have any questions uh, over Twitter, you could use the hashtag Couch Potato Lab. That hashtag is Couch Potato Lab. Now, we have a, a, a really uh, shocking uh, episode today. <laughs> so uh, I'm really excited. Uh, in case you can't tell, I'm like jittering because of all the electricity in the air. Uh, let's introduce uh, our two wonderful scientists that are with me today. Let's start to my left. Hello, everybody. My name is Vanessa. My pronouns are she and her. And a fun fact about me is that this morning, my mom put my brother's t-shirt on my bed. I think she thought it was mine, and I think it's going to be mine now. Hey, that's a great fact. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Tom. Hello, everyone. My pronouns are he, him. And a fun fact about me is that I know how to play seven instruments. Count them, seven. We got the guitar, the bass, the piano, uh, the bassoon, the trombone. Uh, the harmonica, and the recorder. Wow. Yeah. Very impressive. Who do, who do we got to my right? Hello, everyone. My name is Mackenzie. My pronouns are she, her. And a fun fact about me is that one of my favorite things in the in whole entire world are sticky notes. I love sticky notes so much. Big, small, any color. They're my friend. I love them so much. Now, before we get started, we just want to recognize that Eyes as a program and this live stream is coming to you from Treaty 4 territory. That's home of the Nehawak, Nakaway, Nakota, Lakota, Dakota, as well as the homeland of the Métis Michif Nation. And we recognize that our audience is very diverse and comes from many different areas. So we invite you to recognize where you are today and where you're going to be learning with us. Well, thank you very much. Uh, huh. Well, uh. It's a little dark in here, don't you think? It's 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 a little dark, right? I think can it I it is. You know? Whoa, oh, whoa, look at that yeah. blackout. Uh, you know, I could see into the future. <laughs> I, it, you know, all the lights were sputtering over there. I was wondering what's going on over there, and we we had a blackout. So, uh, can anybody see anything? No, no. Uh, this this is crazy. Something must have went wrong. Yeah, you know, here I think. I, oh yeah, I I'm just gonna reach in uh, to my pocket. I think I have a light switch around here. I'm just gonna press it. One, two, three. Whoa, whoa. I can see again. This is this is amazing. I can see. This is this is some uh some crazy science magic that is happening right now. Uh Vanessa, you, you have a look of knowing on your face. What's going on here? You read that look correctly. Uh, so the light went out because something must have gone wrong with our circuitry. So a circuit is an electrical pathway. It will send different electrons down different parts, and then it powers things like the lights. Uh, the first part of the circuit, there's three in total. The first one I have here, this is a very large version of it, but a battery. Mm. You may have seen batteries um, around your house in uh, different toys and remotes, those kind of things. Batteries are the power, so they send electrons, um, which power things, and yes, that's where we get the main source of our power. Hmm. Uh, that's awesome. So uh, we're, we're talking today about batteries and circuits, but I think uh, what happened here is that the electricity cut out. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think so. But uh, one way that you can cut out the electricity without uh, you know, <laughs> turning the whole thing off is you, c you could use a, a light switch like I have right here. Uh, uh, yeah, you can see right there, a beautiful little light switch. 
homemade, of course. Uh, and of course, this turns on and off the flow of electrons. We'll talk about that in just a second. Now, Kens, there's one more thing I think uh, that's required, hey? Yeah, that's right, Tom. So the next thing in the circuit is called the load. So the load is whatever we're trying to power. So sometimes that's a light bulb or maybe it's a blender, whatever you have at the end of your circuit that you're trying to power. So in this case of the flashlight, we'd be trying to power the light bulb. But I don't know, Vanessa, it's not working. We mm. have the three parts of the circuit, but my flashlight, it's still not turning on. What else do we need? Do we need something else? We definitely do need something else. So we need the, something to connect all of the parts of the circuit because they could be on their own, but they're not going to do anything. Mm. So we need um, some sort of wire or any sort of conducting connection. Mm -hmm. So what we have today is an extension cord. I'm going to pick up my side. I think everyone else has a side too. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, there we go. We'll connect it. I'll plug it into the battery. Okay, <laughs> now, Tom, turn on the switch. All right, I'm just going to connect the old switch here. Okay, and then I'm going to connect it. Oh, my goodness. It Look works. It works. So when we connect our circuit together with our wire, so we're completing that pathway, the load turns on. So that power is flowing all the way from the battery on the other side through that switch. So the switch is turned on right now. Now, Tom, what happens if you turn off that switch? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and turn off that switch. Oh, it turned off. It turned so that's off. stopping the electricity from getting to the load. So Tom has control of if this light is on or off right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, oh. to quote that, that famous song, I got the power. Oh. Um, <laughs> you're going to, yes, folks, I do get paid for this job, in case <laughs> you're wondering. Now, I actually have over here on the blackboard, uh, I'm just going to reach on over here. Just, there we go. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Can we see it all, all right there, camera folks? All right. That looks pretty good. Now, this is a classic circuit. Uh, you, you, you might see this later on in school, in higher grades, or even in university uh, when you take physics or electrical engineering. This is how scientists and engineers draw a circuit. Now, this, this just looks like a doodad, you know? It, it looks like nothing. But it's actually uh, very simple uh, in its design. So, Vanessa, you were talking about that battery. Absolutely. And actually, this is how uh, scientists draw batteries. So that part right there. That is where all the electrons are stored. Now, we might remember electrons from chemistry, right? They are those negatively charged uh, atoms. So I'll maybe I'll just draw it like this. So this is an electron. And there's millions and millions of these electrons stored in, a, in the battery. And I like to think of circuits as like a, as like a water slide, you know? Uh, okay. You can only go one way down a water slide, right? And that's down. Yeah. You got it. Right. You you try with all your might. You're gonna you're gonna ruin your vacation if you try going up the opposite way. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, true. So uh, the electrons flow from one end of the battery to the other. So I'm just drawing the path here. There we go. That's a better arrow. But now we've encountered the switch, and the switch uh, is exactly what it sounds like. It turns on and off the flow of electrons. So as you could see, this would be like if maintenance took out a giant chunk of the water slide, uh, which of course is, is dangerous, but in the case of electricity, uh, it just means that the flow of electrons has stopped. Now, if I were to uh, maybe draw a switch that connects just like that, connects it to the rest of the path, we got electricity cooking again. Uh, those electrons are going to keep going down, keep going around town until they reach the load. Now, this is our load right here. Forgive my handwriting. Uh, the load can be anything, but we classically draw it as a light bulb. It can power things like uh, light bulbs. It can power uh, engines. It can power refrigerators. It can power anything that needs to be powered. So it's flowing through there, as you can see. Um, keeps on flowing. Now this part I'm going to actually save for later on into the show because that's a, a very special part to a circuit. So uh, stay on the edge of your seat, folks. That's a circuit. All right. Now, Tom, yep. do you think that there's circuits like all around us? Well, I'd hope so because uh, the studio is very bright and I would hope that uh, there would be more than one circuit powering all these lights. 
You're right, there is. Yes, circuits are all around us. You can find them. There's hundreds of them in the studio, and there's actually a lot of them in your own home, too. For example, in a spot like your kitchen, you might not think that there's a lot of electricity in there and a lot of circuits, but there is a lot. So, for example, if we had, like, a kitchen stove or a kitchen oven, they're all plugged in so that we're getting that electricity from that plug-in and then it's flowing through. We're going to turn that on. So in the case of like a stove or an oven, mm -hmm. we're going to turn it on through um, the switch or we're going to put it to a certain temperature. And then the load is the actual oven or stove, fridge, microwave, whatever you're thinking of. And then it's turning on and doing its intended job. Now, Tom, do you think we should build our own circuit? Do you think that would help? Do you want to do that? Do we got time? Yeah, of course <laughs> we are uh, going to be doing that. Now, I see you have something pretty cool over there already. Uh, it looks like a, a squishy circuit. Am I correct? That's right, Tom. You've got it. And actually, we put one on your desk, too, so you can, oh. um, you know, follow along. Hey. So we're going to go ahead and build a circuit. So do you think we should? You, you got it, Tom. You know all the parts. Let's just... Let's just go ahead and do it. Hey, Vanessa, you yeah. got it. I think so. You can All follow right. along. If you get confused, you can look over at us. We'll probably speed right through it. Absolutely. Yeah. You so got it. Vanessa, what's the first thing that we got to do in this squishy circuit? So I'm taking some Play-Doh, and I'm just rolling it up. I'm putting it, I'm getting two sections, putting them down. So like two little Play-Doh hot dogs. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh. And then you the middle is, what's this called again? Clay. 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 <laughs> exactly. Sometimes words just slip your mind. Now, right. Mackenzie, uh, why, why are we using Play-Doh and why are we using clay? They, they kind of seem like the exact same thing, are they? Yeah, Tom, that's a great question. And in fact, they're not the same thing. What? So we do have two different materials. They're two different colors, so that's very helpful um, to tell the difference. But our orange, or you have green, it looks like. Vanessa's got purple over there. This I is do. our Play-Doh, and it's actually conductive. So when something's conductive, that means that it conducts electricity and mm. allows the flow of electrons through it. So I like to think of the Play-Doh we're using today kind of like our wires. So we're going to pretend that this Play-Doh is our wires. Now, this, um, the, the blue stuff, it's just... Um, just like clay. And this is the opposite. This is actually insulating. So we have conductive materials and then we have insulating materials. And insulating materials are actually the exact opposite. They don't allow the flow of electricity and they stop the electrons. So once the electricity hits the insulating um, dough, it just stops. Nothing flows through it. So um, Vanessa and I, we're going to use that. Uh, Tom, you can use it or you cannot, whatever you think is best for yours. We're not yeah. going to we're not going to tell you exactly how to make it because all circuits are a little bit different. All right. right. I, I'm just, uh, just going to put it over there. Just yeah. going to put it over there. And, I of course, we it. got our battery. So you can use that as well, Tom. Yeah. All right. So so what what are you doing over there? You're, you're connecting something to yes. the two hot dogs. That's right. So this right here, these are our, uh, this is our battery. So I'm putting our battery in. So that's that part of the... Um, the circuit, and then I'm actually going to, I decided my load for the day is going to be a light bulb. So I'm going to add the light bulb in there, and look at that, it lit up. Now, I don't know, um, uh, there's no switch, so that's a little, I guess we could add that, but s it looks like it's working right, Vanessa? Yeah, mine's working too. I've got my light going, my battery's just back here, lights on. It's working well. How are you doing, Tom? Well, you know, uh, we can't all be winners today. Uh, <laughs> as you can see, uh, there's no light coming from my light bulb whatsoever. Oh, no. And uh, me being the critical thinker, I'm thinking there's something wrong with this circuit. Yeah, Tom, you see, there is a few things we need to look out for in our circuit. Mm -hmm. Now, my first piece of advice for you would be to separate your two pieces of Play-Doh. Because what you have happening there right now is something we called a short circuit. Short now, circuit. Now, I think of electrons as kind of being a little bit lazy. They like taking the shortest path possible. Mm. So if I had my, you can see my light bulb is um, lit up right now. If I just take out my insulating piece, and if I squish these Play-Dohs together, it turns off. Oh. So what's happening there is the electricity is flowing from my battery through my wire to my Play-Doh, and then it's just coming right over and coming right back down. And because it's so lazy, it's taking the shortest path possible. Mm. So it's not even going all the way out through my light. It's just taking a shortcut. Mm. And we don't like that. But as soon as I 
separate them. It has no choice but to complete the circle by going all the way around, through that light bulb, down, and then back. So Tom, that's why I put this um, insulating dough in between, because then I can squish them together, and there's no need to worry. They're always going to be apart, because it's kind of separating oh, them. Okay. So I would, if that's my first piece of advice. All right. Now, Vanessa, I, I, I totally agree with her. That, yes. short, that circuit was as short as an autumn's day. Mm. Uh, <laughs> something else is going on here. Uh, it's, I, I, have st I have them separated. You know, I might even put a piece of clay in between them, just to make sure that I'm not doing this wrong. Okay, uh, let's let's see. L give it a shot. Yeah. No. Okay. And it's still not working. So what's what's going on here? Yes, there's another thing that we always have to look out for, especially right here. I think I know the issue. So mm. I'm actually just going to pull these out really fast. Our red one uh, from our battery is our positive end, and the black one is the negative end, mm. which it's fine on their own. But if I am going to take my light bulb in and put it this way, it's not working just like you're having that issue, Tom, because... Oh. If you've ever heard, it's a quite a popular saying, but opposites attract and negatives repel. So, true. yes, that's, it's that's a long saying. <laughs> yeah. It is a long saying, but that's, that's how it works. So what's happening right here where my light isn't working, it's that the same side is together and we don't want that. So our positive red one is going to be flowing through and this must be our positive leg. Since they're the same, they're going to repel each other, and we don't want that. Same thing over here. Our black end will be negative. It'll flow through to the black leg, and it's not going to work. They don't want to be close together. But if we take it, Tom, you can try this as well. All right. Flip it so that we have our positive uh, battery arm going through the Play-Doh to the negative mm -hmm. uh, lamp leg. Then it should work, and it'll, right. it'll attract each other. It'll All be right. Perfect. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip it, and then I'm going to dip it. Hey, yeah, would you look at that? Yes, Perfect. Look at that, Tom. Would you look at that? Yeah, uh, so that has to do with that that water slide, that one-way water slide. That, that one-way water slide. You can only slide. go down, yep. Right. Well, this was a really cool activity, squishy circuits, hey? Of so, course. Uh, now I know that it's a very cool activity, but not everyone can have it at home, right? That's right. So uh, we might need to get into our activity of the day. Now, before we do that, if you have any questions about what we're doing right now, like what is a circuit, can you please describe that again? Or if you have any other sort of questions, comments, or concerns, you could reach us at our phone number down here. That is 570-1013. That phone number again is 570-1013. Or you could reach us on our social media at Eyes Youth, and that works for our Insta, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok. Uh, and again, if you have any sort of questions, uh, you can use the hashtag Couch Potato Lab. That hashtag again is Couch Potato Lab. Now let's get into our activity. Make sure that you have it loaded up on our lab manual. Uh, you could reach the lab manual on our blog on the description below uh, on the YouTube video, but also at bit.ly backslash Couch Potato Lab. Uh, that name again is bit.ly. Uh, backslash couch potato lab and it is called go with the flow perfect something like flow of electrons right i think that's what it is right, or or a water slide go with the you know we're all going to go water sliding after this all right sounds great perfect <laughs> so wait. what is the first thing that we need kens all right so we're going to um get out some tin foil and in our case, we were talking about um, how we have different parts of our circuit, but I'm just going to explain kind of what materials we're going to be using today and what their purpose is in terms of our circuit. So our tin foil, we're going to be using that today as kind of like um, our wire or the, the connections between all of the different parts of our circuit. Then we're going to be using a battery. We're going to be using a 9 volt here in studio, but you can also try using a D battery. Um, try out some different batteries because b different batteries have different voltages, and that's just like the amount of power they have stored within them. So you can try some different batteries at home depending on the size of your load. Now for our load, today we're going to be using a little light bulb. Um, you can try using a flash bulb light bulb, maybe a Christmas light, any type of small light bulb. If it's really big, you're going to need a really, really big battery and we're not using that size today. So you're going to want a small light bulb. And then we're also just going to use a little bit of electrical tape. So our electrical tape is just going to um, help hold it all together. Mm. Now I have all my supplies. What's next? Well, what's next, Vanessa? I can tell you. So with our tin foil, you're going to want to cut it into strips. 
probably only need two. I have a few here just in case something goes wonky. But yes, this is our first step. Get it cut. I got it cut uh, earlier because it's a little bit loud. So our <laughs> first thing is that we wanted to fold it. Um, I'll fold it and then we'll see the size. So we just kind of want to make it a little bit smaller. Roll it up a little bit just so that it's more like a typical wire that you'd be used to seeing. So I'm just going to get that folded. And then, perfect. We're going to put it on our battery. So our battery right here has two uh, circles. And those are going to be our points of contact for our circuit. And we're going to be powering through these two circles. So I have also some electrical tape already cut. And I'm going to be attaching it onto the battery really quick here. So I'm going to put one like so, and then just get a nice fold over. And we have to be really careful because we talked about our short circuits earlier, and we don't want to be short circuiting this project because if the two tin foils are going to touch each other, then the electrons are going to take that shorter path, and we don't want that. So I'm just going to take my next one and fold it up once again. So you're, you're sort of making those wires that we're talking about, right? And mm. why are we using uh, aluminum foil? Is there something about aluminum? Could we use something like plastic wrap or uh, paper? I don't Vanessa? think so we could, no. I think um, that the the main thing that we need to use is something that's conducting. So Mackenzie was talking earlier about conducting materials. That's why we used Play-Doh instead of the clay. So this would be conducting. If we were to have plastic, that would be insulating, just like our clay. And we do not want that because then it wouldn't send any electrons through, which is why sometimes on a wire that might, uh, like, uh, what is it, yeah, you plug it in, like our extension cord, something that you plug in, it's going to be covered in plastic so that you're not touching the wires because that can lead to some bad news. So I'm going to take my other side with my tin foil and very carefully, without touching the two tin foils, just wrap it on there. That's mighty fine tape and you're doing there, Vanessa. Wow. Thanks, Tom. All right. I just got to make sure that they're not touching. Or While you're doing that, um, Vanessa, I just wanted to um, mention that the reason this Play-Doh is conductive, I know these look really similar, and it makes sense that tinfoil is conductive and say plastic wrap isn't because tinfoil looks like it's made of metal and plastic wrap is plastic. But what makes um, Play-Doh so conductive, I'm not sure if you've ever ate Play-Doh. It's not tasty. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's really, really salty. And that salt inside of it is what makes it conductive. So um, that's what makes our Play-Doh conductive, um, where our plasticine or clay isn't. Actually, that's, that's a great timing, really, because we have our first question of the day from our good friends, the Hayes Brothers. Uh, and they're a asking, what other things can we use that is not Play-Doh to light up that light bulb on the squishy circuit? Yeah, so um, that's a great question, Hayes Brothers. So, I mean, you could try using Play-Doh. I think that would be a really good idea. You could use, yeah, like aluminum foil, anything that's conductive, really. So maybe you have some wires. Um, one thing I would maybe try is try a gummy worm and let me know how that works. I've heard that gummy worms are um, conductive. Now, if you look on your screen there, there's some other um, different ideas that are conductive. So we have silver, gold, copper, steel seawater so that would be the salt mm -hmm. in that seawater that, that makes it conductive ocean, yeah. and then those insulators at the bottom so things like rubber glass oil diamond and dry wood those are all things that stop the flow of electricity so use that top row there for some ideas and mm -hmm. just search for um, conductive things around your house because you might just surprise yourself yeah y yeah usually uh, insulators are things that don't have a lot of positively charged uh, electrons in them so I can't think of, because diamonds is just compressed carbon, uh, so it's just one element. And carbon likes to stay neutral. That means that it has no charge, so I could see why it wouldn't. Same with glass. You know, y you ever lick a glass? It's not salty. It just tastes like dish soap if you pull it out too early. <laughs> now, Vanessa, what are you doing over there? I've been having some funky results, I would call it. Hey, so we love the funk. Exactly. Yeah. So when I have been connecting them, my light bulb will light up and then go away. So I'm going to try a new light bulb and hopefully that we can get um, some sort of good reading. I'm hoping, but sometimes You know, science is happen. all about trial and error. That's oh, see? look at that. Look at that. 
there we go this one's working much better here i'm gonna put it in there this one's not um immediately short circuiting look at that hey perfect we've got it lit up now i actually have one over here that works as well let's see what color mine is I can't remember just what color of light bulb I picked. All right, so if I connect, I have it all built up here. Whoa, mine is green. Whoa. Whoa. So I'm just gonna kind of explain what's happening here. So again, with this um, circuit, we don't have a switch. So I'm sure you're coming to the conclusion that the switch is kind of optional in a circuit. So if you don't have a switch, lots of times your circuit will still work, but you don't have an easy way to turn it on and off. So you don't have an easy way to stop that flow of electrons. So in places like a house, that's not ideal because we don't want to leave our lights on all the time. Mm -hmm. Or electronics, we don't want to leave them all day long because it's going to uh, make the battery run out of um, power right away. So maybe not ideal, but in this one we have, we definitely have our battery, so that's our power source here at the back. And then we definitely have our load at the front, which is that green light bulb. And then of course, because it is a circuit, we have that pathway, which is our tin foil. Now, Vanessa mentioned a short circuit, so a short circuit is very possible here as well. So um, right now my light bulb is working, as you can see, but if I push my tin foil together before it reaches that light bulb, it shuts off. So again, it's just taking that shortest path possible. So because the tin foil is touching, it's going back to the battery right there before it even reaches. But mm. as soon as I give it space in between, it's good to go and it just fell off. So yeah. All right. Very cool. And, and you got yours working great. And you know what? It's already starting to look a lot brighter in here uh, <laughs> with all the electricity <laughs> going on uh, around here. And again, if you have been doing this activity, following us along, you can reach us uh, at our you uh, sorry at our social media handle at Eyes Youth. Uh, please feel free to send in photos of your experiments, what light you ended up using. Because I know you could use a flashlight bulb. We're using LED lights. Uh, we want to see your wonderful creations. Maybe you use something besides aluminum foil. Maybe you used I don't know. Is, is pasta? Would pasta be a conductor? Who knows? Uh. You know, we might be able to think that one through, but yeah, we would love to see your designs. Of course. Now, uh, it's time for, uh, oh, are you ready over there? Are you, you going to need some time? Oh, yeah. How, How about, doing? yeah, I'm definitely going to need some time. Me too. All right. So uh, we, we are doing uh, a fan favorite, which is uh, the Science Showdown in just a moment. Yes, it is time for our science showdown now. But before we get to it, uh, we actually have, uh, I want to say, special uh, apparatuses. Apparati? I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's uh, right, Tom. Ken's, what do you got going on over there? Yes, so we have a eyes favorite. We brought our Makey Makeys with us today. So Makey Makeys, um, they operate on a circuit. So essentially, when you're setting up your Makey Makey, you're making your very own circuit. So what I'm doing here is my battery for this circuit is my actual computer. So my computer is all charged up. I'm using the battery of the computer. And then I have this cord, and it's going to connect to this fancy thing here, and we call this our circuit board. It has a bunch of different buttons on it. Now, I'm just going to plug that in so it's good to go. And now, yeah, I mean, I could, I could just complete my circuit using this circuit board, but that's boring. I, it is boring. We don't like boring here at Eyes. So I'm going to connect some of these alligator clips and to my circuit board. And I mentioned candy before. And honestly, I love candy. So I'm going to try it out today. I got a candy brain that I'm going to try out. And well, I got some gummy worms too. So why not try those out as well? Mm -hmm. so, so why are you using candy, Mackenzie? Yeah, I'm using candy because candy is actually conductive. So again, we're going to want to make sure we're using a conductive material here. If it's an insulating material, it's just going to stop the circuit dead right there. And we don't like that. Now, Vanessa, do I have enough alligator clips here? How I have, have them connected to the arrows. To the arrows. No, you don't have enough quite yet. You'll only need one more to make this a functional piano. You'll have two keys because you've got two arrows, but we need to connect ourselves to the circuit because humans are actually conductive. What? Isn't that crazy? Who would have thunk? No. But yes, yeah. what we're going to do on our Makey Makeys is connect a 
alligator clip to the earth area. So what we're going to do with that is put it on the earth and then if we hold it, we're actually going to become part of the circuit. So I'm going to hold the other end of the earth cord and then type. Oh yeah, there we go. And then I'm going to press my gummy. <laughs> I was pushing it by accident earlier, so if anyone heard some rogue piano sounds, that was me. Just accidentally making myself a circuit. <laughs> yes, we can push our different ones, and since I'm connected, it works. If I take myself out of the circuit and just try and play, it doesn't work at all. Because it's not a circuit, it's just me pressing gummies. Just you pressing gummies. Yep. So y you said something about being grounded to the earth. Now, Mackenzie, do you know what being grounded means? Yeah, so when we ground our circuit, we're completing it here. So we're just giving it a neutral line. So I actually, while I was doing this, I was testing it out, and this gummy worm isn't conductive. Really? So it didn't oh. work. I think it might be because it's coated in sugar, so mm. it didn't work. But um, So I this would be insulating then. But is it delicious? I don't know, Tom. You tell me. <laughs> mm. Whoa. Guaranteed uh, to, to light up your body. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, folks. Uh, yes. So now uh, let's get into some trivia based okay. on what we've learned today. Now, uh, if you want to answer, you have to hit that buzzer. Does that make sense? You got play, it. Play a song for you on the piano. Yeah, <laughs> a, a quick one second song. That's right. <laughs> uh, so right. Think, think of a one second song in your head. Oh, whoops, I was getting excited and starting to play <laughs> it. That's <laughs> a good song. <laughs> it's great, <laughs> I know. All right, so first person that I hear uh, will get the uh, the question and they have a chance to answer it. So, question the first. <laughs> yeah, I said that right. Yeah, yeah uh, we're good. What does LED stand for? <laughs> you know, I I saw Vanessa <sighs> hit her thing, but it did her not thing. connect. <laughs> but you know what? I'm also a mean host today, so I'm gonna go with Mackenzie. Wow. <laughs> uh, okay. What does LED stand for? You know what? I'm just gonna. I'm going to take a guess on this one, but yeah. I'm feeling good. Yeah. Um, LED. I think it's an acronym for Light Emitting Device. You know, you were so close, but uh, so wrong. <laughs> so wrong. I'm, I'm going to try to give it to Vanessa. Vanessa, what does LED stand for? My guess was nowhere near as connected to electricity. My guess was um, long mm -hmm. earth. Mm-hmm. Mm, dilly bar. Long earth dilly bar. Uh, that's every person's dream. Uh, <laughs> but that is, b you're both, you're both wrong. Unfortunately, LED stands for light emitting diode. Oh, so, oh so close. You were close. Yeah, diode means there's two. So I, I'm not quite sure what the two is referring to. I think it, it means that there's two of those little legs there. However, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it, it seems correct. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, sure. Why not? That's it a is very good hypothesis, it's Tom. It's almost hmm. the weekend. <laughs> now, uh, this next question actually goes beyond our basic understanding of circuits. Now, yes. what would happen, uh, this is like an A or B question. Okay. Uh, what would happen if I put the switch before the load? Would it A... Uh, you know what, I'm going to give you a negative one point for buzzing too early. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so you're at negative we'll one. We'll take it, we'll take uh, it. Does it A, uh, turn on, or does it B, not turn on? Vanessa. <laughs> yep, that was mine. I think it would turn on. I don't remember which option that was. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it would. So um, if we had the load before the switch it would turn on. Yes. However, if the switch was was off, it, it wouldn't complete the circuit and uh, it, it wouldn't really work. So really, uh, but ideally you would want the switch to be before the load because otherwise you wouldn't be able to turn off your lights at all. And I, I know that you had that problem once, right? Where yeah. you went 48 hours in complete uh, brightness. Yeah, that's right, I did. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a very, Eye-opening experience, oh. some would say. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, uh, this next one is our final one. It is a true or false question. Okay, got it. All right. It, it's yep. almost poetic in a way. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I want to say. You know, okay. I've been reading a lot of poetry. Uh, 
Let me just think real quick. Got it. True or false? Are circuits like magnets? It's not working. <gasps> oh, it's <laughs> right either. Wow, that is a horrifying sound. <laughs> it's uh, just, it, they hit all at once, yeah. Uh, it's true. You are correct. Yeah, it is true. Can you explain why? Yeah, I can because uh, magnets have positive and negative sides just like batteries. So uh, Vanessa kind of was talking about this a little bit before, how um, opposites attract. So in magnets, uh, just like we see on the board, the uh, negatives and positives attract to each other and um, then they retract um, the others or yeah, repel the others. So very similar to a circuit is a magnet. So they kind of act on the same principles of attraction. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you are absolutely correct. Now, what's the score now? Is it one to one? I don't think. Oh, I did get one question right. Yeah. And yeah. Mackenzie one to one. one. So yeah. I think we should have a tiebreaker. Okay. okay. Uh, a tiebreaker. Let me just think one off the top of my head. All right. Um, all okay. right. I got one. Okay. Okay. I got one. Okay. Is the element known as hydrogen conductive? Oops. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with Vanessa because, <laughs> yeah. I had to, I hit everything at once. Is element, or is the element hydrogen conductive? So, I remember from my chemistry classes that it's positive most of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty happy. Yeah. An electron. <laughs> yeah. Yes, pretty happy and it has a positive charge. And I remember that electrons have a negative charge. I'm going to say no. Hmm. Really? Mm, yeah. Interesting. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to A, B these answers. All and right, I'm going to tell you sure. right just for the sake of uh, television suspense. Uh, Kenz, what do you think? You know what? I'm going to go with yes. Why? Because it's opposite of Vanessa. And then <laughs> I have more chance of being right. And we're not at a tie. Well, I hate to say it. Wait, no, I don't. Uh, Mackenzie, you are absolutely right. <laughs> Woo! Uh, it <sighs> is a conductive. Uh, it's also very flammable. If you look up uh, hydrogen, uh, it is extremely flammable. So, yeah, we have that notion of electrons being negative, and they're going along a path that is positive, right? Mm, okay. uh, and hydrogen often is in the form of a proton. Oh, right? all right. Ah. Uh, you know what? No hard feelings. Let's uh, play a celebratory song. Me and yeah. Vanessa celebrating each other. You I ready? like that idea. Kay. I'm not ready. Okay. You now let me know when you're ready. I'm, I'm ready now. Okay. Tom, can you count us in, please? And one, and a two, and a one, two, three. Ah. Uh, takes me back to the old country. Look at that. That was so good. That was good. Beautiful. Rated out of work. And it's amazing that I got to hear that live <laughs> and very loud in my ears. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a wacky show this has been. It's been a good one. Um, but now is, is probably my favorite part, the part where we get to acknowledge uh, some scientists and engineers around the world that probably that has to do with the episode that we're talking about. I'm talking about our STEM Spotlight. Dr. Lei Zhang is an assistant professor of electronic systems engineering at the University of Regina. Some of her research interests are artificial intelligence, machine learning, brain stimulation, ultrasound testing, and pipeline inspection. One of Dr. Zhang's projects in the United Kingdom involved leading and creating long-range guided wave ultrasonic testing for detecting corrosion in pipelines. One may say that she is electrifying. Nicely done, Dr. Zhang. Thank you. That was our STEM spotlight. Uh, now, it is, it, it's, it's time for uh, one of my favorite things. But before we do, if you have any questions about uh, our, our scientists, I know, I know that we often talk about these STEM spotlight scientists, but if you ever want to get to know more about them, uh, you could always reach out to us. And we, we usually have some way of contacting these scientists, right? So again, our social media uh, that you can use to contact us to get to know them a bit better is right there at Eyes Youth. That's on all platforms of social media, especially TikTok. That's a new one, isn't it? That We're is new. That's a new one. We love to see it. We love to do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And also, if you have any questions, especially for our upcoming segment a little bit later in the show, 
uh, we, we, we want your questions about electricity because we're, we're very well versed, I would say. This is, this is, an, yeah, this is an expert uh, level activity that we do. Now, it is time for our potato problem. <laughs> yes, it is time for our potato problem. There's the little uh, tater right there. <laughs> our potato problem is, uh, if we can zoom out here, uh, you'll see that I've actually laid out before you a devious little obstacle course. Oof. Um, and tough. Yeah. And as you can see, there's more than one way to get around it. Whoa. What do you mean? There's more than one way to get around it. Uh, as okay. in... Okay, so I'll start at start. Yeah. Okay, so I'm. It's like a circuit, right? It's like a circuit. So I'll, okay, easy enough. Explain your I path like a circuit, please. Okay, I will. Okay, so I'm starting. Number one, I'm gonna assume this is the battery. This is the battery. The battery. Uh, uh, oh, I see the problem here. So there's there's two ways to go, but this whole time we've been talking about one pathway, one water slide. Mm -hmm. What, mm -hmm. uh, Tom? Help me out. What did you tricked me? I did. Uh, you know, this is the best part of my job is the devious lies. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, we, we talked about circuits in a very, uh, I want to say linear. That means just like in one direction sort of way. But there's actually a two, two different types of circuits. Uh, really 2.5 because you can combine them and it's a, it's a whole deal. Wow. Uh, it's a whole big family reunion. <laughs> if I just flip this board over. You'll see that there's two types of circuits. Now, Vanessa, uh, I know that you're pretty well versed in one of them. Which which one? Which one was that again? You're talking about it before. The was it the parallel ones or was it the ones in series? Hmm. I can't recall. I, I think I think you were talking about series. Series. Yeah, because hmm. you were serious about series. I remember you said that. I sure was. You didn't even say hello to me. <laughs> you said, I'm serious about series. Serious about series. Here's your chance. Okay. So I'm guessing we're starting at the battery. Mm hmm Right? Yep. Okay. I'm starting at the battery. We're going to go around R1, I'm thinking. There's yep. a little arrow there. Yeah. Um, I think, and then to R2. R2. And then to R3. Yeah. I think the R stands for resistor. Is that correct? That is true. Uh, resistors are something that we haven't really talked about all that much. Uh, resistors sort of, they're like... Uh, they control how much water goes down the slide. Does that make sense? So a, a resistor is kind of like uh, it, it, it's choking the amount of electrons that gets through it. It, it makes the tube uh, thinner or wider. So the more resistance that you have, the less electrons that are going to go through. Mm. Now, uh, if we go back to the board here really quick, sorry about that. Uh, we'll you'll you'll notice that a series it, there's nothing to it. You know, it just keeps going around. It just keeps going We're around in a, in, a, in, a, in a series, like really. There's one option. That's, that's my ideal obstacle course. Yeah. You know, I know exactly what I'm doing, exactly what comes next. It's just one pathway. That's, mm -hmm. that's my jam. That's what I'm good at. But I don't know. Something else happened here. Something else did happen here. Now, Ken's, you were, you were talking about uh, another type. So when she said, I'm serious about series, uh, you also uh, said something uh, that... That, that yeah. Uh, yeah, I said I'm positive about parallel. Oh, ah. oh nice yeah. one. Oh, that's a good one. And I put you on the spot there. So uh, what's going on with this parallel circuit here? Yeah, so as you can see, there's multiple different pathways. So I don't know. It looks to me like there's lots of different options they can take, but it all ends at the same battery. It's mm -hmm. all connected. Yeah. So yeah, you can see on the board here we have a series. We got the two light bulbs, but it's only taking one path, whereas the parallel it has two different paths. There's still two bu light bulbs. There's still the same components, but there's two different pathways. That has, uh, it's kind of complicated in a couple of different ways, but um, it just helps to make the light bulbs a little bit brighter so that they're kind of sharing energy in a different ways. And now with this new idea, I think that I can confidently do the obstacle course. Get on over here. All right. So I got it. I'm... I'm here at the start, I'm going here, this is probably like the battery, and you know what, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good, I'm going to go this way, and this might be maybe a switch, maybe a resistor, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm going to end up at the load, and I'm going to finish it off. 
All right. Yeah. So I did it. You did but it. There's multiple pathways. I could do it again. Yeah, do it okay. again. Do it. For so the folks I can at home. Start. I can go to the battery. This time I'm going to switch it up because this is a parallel obstacle course. I'm going to go this way. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go here to the load. And look at that. I still finished at the same spot. So and that's you know the what same your prize idea. is? What's my prize, Tom? It's that gummy worm that I said that I ate earlier. <laughs> Here's right. looking at you, kid. Very good. All right, so mm. that was our, our, our potato <laughs> problem. I know it's a, it's a little different than what we're used to. Uh, but yeah, so circuits are, are a little more complex than we think, but also th they're very, uh, I like to say, intuitive. That means that they just make sense if you think uh, long and hard about it. We, we want electrons going only in one direction because it can only go in one direction. Water slide. Yeah, like a water slide. Have you ever seen water run backwards? Nope. That's when you know you got to run to the hills. Cause <laughs> I've uh, also never seen a overflowing water slide. Really? Then that oh. would be like a pool. That so there must be. be some resistors in that water slide mm -hmm. for sure. Smart. Mm -hmm. So next time uh, you're water sliding, just think, yeah, I am going to the bottom of the pool. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yep. You know where you're going to end up for sure, and you're going to walk right back up there just like a... Like a circuit. Yeah, yes. absolutely. So, uh, what a what a goofy show uh, this has been. Circuits, I think, always brings out the best in in eyes. And uh, speaking of the best, now it's time for the best part of the show, and that is ask our scientists. That's right. Ask our scientists. It is the part of the show where you, the viewers, are in complete control. Uh, you have taken over the station and are willing to bombard us with questions. Uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. Okay, we have I'm excited. Can we, we buzz in? I love this buzzer. Oh no, give me a second and I, we definitely can. Okay. Absolutely, we'll give you uh, a couple seconds. You know, this first one's actually for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, I am the best. Yes, uh, you, you got it, Tom, always. This question is, is Tom's favorite rapper 2 Chains? Uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, my favorite rapper is his half brother, One Chain, <laughs> uh, because I only wear one chain. <laughs> nice. So yeah, there's there's our good friend Two Chains. Maybe we can get him on the show one day. Probably. Talking about chains. Who knows? You got it. There's science everywhere around us. I'm <laughs> sure Two Chains has definitely got some science knowledge. He he went he went to university. He has a he has a degree in everything. In, in, in everything. Oh, in everything. What the mm. heck? I need to get that. Where where did he go to university for that? No idea. <laughs> Look <laughs> it up. <laughs> All right. Here's here's another one. Uh, it says real question this time. Uh, what happens when I plug things into an outlet instead of using a battery? Is there a battery in my wall? Who wants to take that? You know, I hear you mashing. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to complete it. I forgot to ground it. Remember we oh talked yeah. about that? Oh, there it is. <laughs> there you go. You got there it. There you go. All right. So um, we're talking about outlets. So inside our outlet, I know we can't see them, but there's wires and stuff hidden within our wall. So that's connecting the circuit. Um, so it's kind of, I like to think of outlets as like an extension cord. You're just plugging it in and extending out to where that electricity can flow to. All right, very cool, very cool. Uh, so there's not a battery in the wall. There's <laughs> there's what we have called uh, generators, right? Yeah, they're really big, and there's lots of big generators that power like a whole community. So Regina has like a gigantic uh, generator that helps power different parts of the city. Same with little towns and villages and mm -hmm. stuff as well. So it all gets um, generated in one spot, and then through the wires and stuff, it goes to different places to power different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. And often, well, I have a little story for you. Uh, the power went out in my whole neighborhood. What? That never happens. I've never had that happen. Really? really? No. Well, you, you also live a little outside the city on your own little, on your own little uh, palace. I don't, I, I don't remember what it's called. Acreage. That's what it's called. Uh, yeah, so uh, the power went out in my community. And, but, but before it did, we heard this loud bang. What? Uh, so that was probably the generator. And it turns out uh, a squirrel <laughs> got fried up. Oh, uh, no. So That's awful. That's yeah, so, sad. so that, that is awful. Uh, and you know those power lines that you see far above your house? That's what's supplying the energy to your houses from the generator. And I think that's where the, the squirrel got toasted. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's why our uh, things that we plug into the wall have those insulating plastics around them. So that's that that's we don't get fried. That's true. So we don't get fried. 
Look at that. Electricity, science, it's everywhere. You cannot get away from it. Truly. Uh, this next question, I think I'm going to give it to Vanessa, actually, because you talked a little bit about it. Can I still play a song? Absolutely. We okay. love to hear it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we would love to hear it. Uh, you said humans are conductive. And why is this? Come on. It's not connected to the ground. To the ground. Oh, you're so right, Tom. See, that's why other scientists need each other. Exactly. There we go. There okay. Go. <laughs> humans are conductive because we ha also have salt in us. So when you're eating, it doesn't just all go away. It's there's salt in you, so it works out. The salt can carry electrons. They kind of give them a piggyback, mm. and then it makes a whole circuit because it'll just pass the electrons off through all the mm -hmm. salt. Yeah, that's basically why humans are conductive. So next time someone says, "Why are you so salty?" just say, "I'm a human being. <laughs> I'm supposed to be." <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, we have a very special uh, question right here. If I win a potato clock, hmm, why would you win a potato clock? Hmm. Will I ma be making a circuit too? Who wants to take this one? Oh, I can, I can take this Kay, now. Take it away. Um, I got a buzz in. Mine is very delayed, but <laughs> I mean, what can you do? Now, these uh, potato clocks, they're exclusive to eyes. And actually, because they're so exclusive, uh, eyes headquarters has sent us in the real answer to this question. Mm. Um, and they say that what the potato does is simply help conduct the electricity by acting as what is called the salt bridge between the two metals, allowing the electron current to move freely across the wire to create electricity. Wow. So there you have it. There is a salt bridge. It's helping to conduct the electricity. So. I hope that you can win one of our giveaways so that you can try it out for yourself at home. Now, these giveaways, do we have a giveaway right now? I, I don't know. Uh, do I'm just looking around in, in the room, and uh, the room is saying, yes, we do have a giveaway. <laughs> uh, in fact, we have two giveaways. One is our Instagram giveaway uh, that we have going on. I think that is to win a free week of camp. Am I, am I that wrong? That's no, so I'm, correct. I'm so You've correct. You've never been more right. I've never been more right. Uh, yeah, so we have one on Instagram uh, to win a free week of camp. Uh, and then we have another one to win a potato clock using this uh, little trivia question. In episode 27, Don't Be a Freud, what did Kat and Katie eat in the delayed gratification experiment? The delayed gratification experiment. And if you answer this question correctly, you can win one of these handy dandy uh, full of starch and candy potato clocks. Uh, yeah, you could, you could win one of these. You could tweet or text our answers with the hashtag CouchPotatoLab to our real life phone number down there or at our social media at EyesYouth, of course, of course. Uh, do we got any more questions? Yeah. I'll yeah. ready myself then to buzz in. Yeah? Yeah, I'll get ready too. I might know it. You never know. All right. So, would the sun be considered a load? a switch, or a battery. Oh, Vanessa, you already, you already know. Wow, you already that's know. right. So sometimes with renewable energy, we use different sources of power. So in our light here, we used a battery as our source of power. If we have solar panels, for example, then we're using the sun as the battery because that's the power source. If we have a wind turbine, we're using wind as the power source. So it would be the battery. Hmm. So, so, so it's uh, a big old battery in the sky. Basically. Mm. Basically. Thank you, son. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. I think that is all the questions that we have for Ask Our Scientists. Uh, Ken, do you have anything else to say about today? Well, I have to say that I am so excited because it's Friday. And, I mean, it's great because the weekend's coming up, but what's even greater is that Monday's coming up. And on Monday, we're starting our virtual eyes camp. Now, in our virtual eyes camp, you're going to get to spend some time with us as instructors for two hours a day on Zoom. We're going to send you a bunch of really cool materials, so you get these materials in your own home. You get to keep them forever. There's a bunch of materials to do activities. There's all these instructions and procedures and science-y facts and things in this amazing booklet we have. We're also going to send you some eyes swag. Now, I know you're going to want to join us after hearing all of this amazing um, news and details, so you can go ahead and register. Our registration is open now, and it's on our website for more information. So talk to your parents and guardians about coming to Eyes Camp. We have one coming up for uh, quite a few weeks here. I think yeah, we have seven weeks, seven weeks of camp coming yeah. up. Yeah, so 
I hope you can join us there. We're so, so excited, and they start on Monday. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Vanessa, what activities can these kiddos be expecting to be doing at Eyes Camp? Good question, Tom. So we have three different summer camps. So we have our regular Eyes Camp, but it's anything but regular. It's very extreme. <laughs> we also have our Code Makers Camp, and we have our All Girls Camp. So I'll explain what those mean. Our Eyes Camp, you do very fun sciencey things like chemistry, biology, physics, computer science, all those fun things. Uh, we even have a little Minecraft going on in there. I think we're doing some biology. I know we're making a microscope, is it? We're doing some microscopes. Some we're doing stuff some like microbiology that. stuff. Yes, exactly. Microscope, microbiology, lots of micros. Love it. Code makers, we have, a, it's a coding camp. So you come, you're going to learn lots of things about coding. Our programming that we're using is Microbit, uh, Scratch, and Minecraft. So you're going to learn to code three different areas. Then mm -hmm. we have our all girls camp and that is going to be for our girls out there and we are going to be focusing also on science, computer science, chemistry, biology, physics, all of those things and engineering, don't forget it. And it's going to be focused on all of our amazing female scientists who have gotten us to where we are today. Awesome. Well, that just sounds like a uh, like a big old barrel of fun. It is. And and you get to do that for a whole week? Yeah, you got it. And Every single day, Monday to Friday, two hours a day. And it's not just two hours because you're going to have so many activities and fun things to do that you're going to be able to extend it past that two hours. So you got a whole day full of activities. It's going to be so much fun. And on Friday, we're going to have a huge science show video for you. <laughs> we're going to have some explosions. It's, it's going to be the best. I, I cannot wait. I'm not sure if I'll be able to sleep. I might as well Leave my lights on. <laughs> Might as well leave your lights on. I'm not fact, sleeping anyways. I think uh, Ken's is going to be jogging the entire time that she's doing her virtual camps. Is that correct? Because you just can't contain your energy? You know what? That That's true. Because they're virtual, I'm just going to be holding out my phone. I'm just going to be running. Mm -hmm. Running the whole time. <laughs> if you want to see that go down in real life, uh, feel free to register for our camps. Uh, they start next week. We're super excited. Today was a great episode. It was goofy. It was wild. Uh, it was a great little lead into a hopefully wonderful weekend that everyone is having. Now, we will be back on Monday. If you are not in camps yet, we will be back every single day, uh, every single weekday, correction. Uh, so before we go, we would just like to say thank you again for sticking around. Um, this was an awesome episode. And now to, to lead us out, to play us out, uh, here are all the supporters that make it possible. Thank you. Bye. Bye.